Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a great week so far. I hope you're all healthy and strong. Welcome Fuang Domenico Masanate Chayani. Nice to see many of our members in this class ready to learn. Welcome Habib, Ryan, good to see many of our regular viewers and subscribers as well. Students, in this class, we are going to be looking at an IELTS speaking part one to start off this week of live classes. And this one will be about music. IELTS uh, speaking, the speaking uh, part or section of your exam, is a 12 to 15 minute interview. It consists of three parts, starting with part one being the easiest, but also the most stressful because it's when students are trying to get comfortable with um, this daunting examiner that is assessing their English ability. So we're going to focus on having a strong start to your speaking and speaking part one is a general topic that's related to you uh, so in this case of course it's music you can expect that the questions will be related to your favorite types of music when you listen to music and so forth so we'll be looking at those today and we will be practicing questions and answers and i will be showing you what skills and techniques lead to a band eight, band nine score for part one in the speaking? This material is brought to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that we have produced which power these live lessons. We will use one of these websites today for interacting with students, talking, uh, asking questions for part one as well. These websites have our textbooks, our audio CDs. So definitely if you like these live classes, join the premium package. It's a one-time payment. You click this big red button that's just above my head there for aehelp.com and you get lifetime access. It doesn't cost a lot of money. So it's a very effective way to invest a little bit of money into increasing your IELTS scores. We are an IDP affiliate, a British Council partner, and an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent, so we're definitely here to help you and we know what you need to do. Uh, the discount code we have for you this week is DO9TY. Uh, that discount code will get you a 10% discount to further help you make up your mind and join the premium course. Um, the general IELTS is gieltshelp.com. It's the green background. And again, you just click that big red button that's right above uh, my head there, right there, to join the premium IELTS package. We also um, released uh, a new uh, video for you uh, in the last couple of days. Hopefully you check that out. I'll share the URL for that in a second. We have websites for you, or sorry, apps. Um, if you go to your app store, <clears throat> you can uh, download Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Install those on your phone or your tablet, and then you can link those to the websites um, as well. You can follow us on Instagram, IELTS underscore AE help, G IELTS help. Uh, and you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel to get these live class uh, notifications. Of course, hit the bell button uh, so you get notified. This week we've got lots of live classes for you. If you have questions about IELTS or English, send us an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. All right. Shub, I see that you're saying it was very helpful, sir. I'm not sure what you are referring to, but I'm glad that something we did was very, very helpful. Black Panther, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for asking. All right. Domenico, I can see that it's very cold for you in Sicily today. Yes, temperatures have dropped a little bit here also. Uh, Gian, 
Jellico, uh, thank you for joining our group of members. Welcome aboard. All right, as you can see, students, I'm constantly checking the chat as well. So if you have questions, you can also ask me there. Okay. All right, everybody. So um, we've got uh, our schedule up. You can check it out on our YouTube community posts as well. Uh, we've got uh, the speaking part one right now. Then tomorrow, we'll have some reading for members a little bit earlier. And then we'll have listening part three and part four for our subscribers at around this time. So definitely subscribe to the channel. And then on Saturday, we will have more speaking. We'll have speaking part two and speaking part three. So definitely mark that all in your calendar. Attend these live classes, use them together with your premium IELTS package and you're golden. You're gonna be ready for that exam when it's coming. Um, this is the uh, most recent video release. I'll put that in the chat. <clears throat> there you go. You can check that out when you got a minute. It's a really good IELTS speaking training practice video, this one, students. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out and doing the first person karaoke style uh, speaking practice, okay? All right. Domenico, I just got back from three days of skiing up on Mount Washington, so I know what it's like to be in the cold <laughs> especially recently but uh, mind you that was a lot of fun so I can't complain about that that's for sure all right um, students uh, let's get into some speaking questions uh, all right so for those of you who are again new to the IELTS speaking speaking section it's a 15 minute interview <clears throat> 12 to 15 minutes not to be taken lightly it's not just a friendly conversation Okay, do not, do not fall into the misconception that you are going there to have a 12 minute chat with some examiner. It is a structured oral exam with three parts. Part one, they will ask you some questions on a general topic, some questions to get to know you, introductions. Part two, there will be a cue card where you have to answer some specific questions and give a one to two minute little presentation. And then part three will be follow up questions that are related to that part two. And those are dealing more with um, the general public um, and um, community concept, okay? You have to practice these. It's a formal professional style of communication where you should use natural language, you should use some expressions, idiomatic language. Most importantly, you need to give coherent and accurate answers, okay? So definitely practice for your IELTS speaking months before your exam, okay? And we'll show you how to do that. Uh, when you do have your test on test day, uh, show up one hour before your exam start time, okay? You have to show up at least 20 minutes before because they tell you that you have to register and check in 20 minutes before your interview time starts. But show up one hour before your interview starts and uh, find another uh, candidate to practice uh, your English with and get confidence while warming up, okay? So it's a very, very important tip. This tip alone can save you an entire band score, everybody, okay? That's why I repeat it just about every single time we do speaking, all right? So IELTS is marked on a nine band scale. Speaking is no different. Speaking is also marked on a nine band scale. And um, a lot of people miss their needed score by half a band or one band. So like a 5.5 instead of a 6.5 or a six instead of a 6.5. So this one tip can be that difference, okay, of that half band. It's showing up early 
finding another candidate. If you show up just before your exam and you're sitting quietly in a corner and, or you're chatting with your friend in your own language, that's going to take you the other direction. All right, invisible says, okay. All right. Um, Raquea says, in India, they allow entry only 20 minutes before there is no atmosphere to talk. Raquea, outside the exam center, you can always find somebody who is there waiting to go in and they're early, okay? You don't have to be in the exam center to find that person. You can be outside of the exam center. I have done the IELTS exam and when I showed up at the exam center, in the exam center, there wasn't really chances to find someone, but outside the exam center, I saw several people waiting for their IELTS and I asked this one guy and he was really happy. He was like, yeah, sure, that sounds really good. And so we sat down on a bench outside the building and we talked. I, I am certain that in India, where English is a very popular language, you can find someone before your IELTS exam to talk to for an hour, okay? All right, Bekaris Zangarov is saying, my speaking exam is tomorrow. I'll keep my fingers crossed that you get a good score, Bekaris. And follow this advice tomorrow. Show up to your exam one hour early. Find another candidate. Talk to them. Bring some uh, speaking questions with you and practice it with them. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Zarnagor says, My exam is in two weeks and I have a question. Zarnagor, just ask away. Okay. All right. Oleski, our member, is saying, is your, from your experience, what is the most problematic part of the exam? Oleski, the most problematic part of the exam, I find, for the speaking, if you're, we're dealing with the speaking right now, is the candidates don't give clear answers. So we're going to focus on that. They don't provide a clear answer to the question with a good explanation. Okay? All right. Okay, students, so you show up to your exam one hour early, you find another candidate, you practice some IELTS speaking questions with them, you build that confidence, you go in, you register 20 minutes before, then you spend the next 20 minutes thinking about your strategies, practicing your English with anyone you can find, going to the washroom so that you don't have to do that while you're in the test, take a bottle of water with you, it's good to have, it helps you to calm down helps you to speak clearly, okay? So be yourself, be you. You deserve to be there, all right? And then you get called in by the examiner and the examiner will sit there and they will be like me. It depends if you're doing the face-to-face -face or the computer-based exam, but you're basically sitting there looking at a guy like me or at a girl um, and um, they will uh, set up the interview by saying welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam my name is Adrian I will be your examiner for this part of the test it has three parts I will give you instructions for each I'm recording this for marking and clerical purposes this is candidate number 75918972 examiner number 5481 Exam Center 7YQ94 in Vancouver. The time right now is 14 o'clock. Let's begin. May I see your identification? Always the first question. If you cannot produce the same identification you did at check-in, they will ask you to leave. So they will ask you, may I see your uh, identification? Now, you should have a very natural, calm response and a full sentence for this, knowing that this question is uh, coming, okay? All right, um, so give me a nice full sentence answer, okay? Nice full sentence answer for this question. Kashish, yes, here it is, is too simple. It, it seems like you're scared, you're going to just keep your sentences really short, okay? Um, Harjad says, yes, sure, here's my passport that I've used for registration, please have a look. Uh, Harjad, that is good, okay? Okay. 
So at least say this much, students. You want to show right away to this examiner that you are there to give nice, clear, full sentences. You understand that you are in a professional uh, communication for the next 12 to 15 minutes. So notice that hard jot starts with a little bit of colloquial English, like, yeah, sure, is colloquial, but it's okay. Um, if you'd like to start a bit on the more more on the polite end, you can say, yes, absolutely. Here is my passport, which I had used uh, to register and check in. Um, please have a look at my credentials. Okay, and then hold it up nice and confidently uh, for the examiner. All right. Um, CR7 says this, okay? So CR7 says, sure, it's my passport. And of course, I'm guessing you're holding your passport here. So um, technically, the examiner is not marking you on these questions, but indirectly it's affecting your score okay so um, there's uh, there's quite a bit of um, confusion around how the examiner establishes your score okay keep in mind students this is very important okay that certain um, behaviors during your speaking interview uh, will have an indirect impact on your score. They are not directly assessing the level, but it does affect your score. Okay, so this is really, really important. So, you know, like some people will say, oh, but Adrian, um, those first few questions, like the ones that are like, you know, what's your name? Uh, may I see your identification? It doesn't affect your score. How wouldn't it? If, I, if I'm measuring your ability to communicate, then any word and every word you say to me within that context of the interview will have an effect on your score directly or indirectly okay yeah sure so your direct score will come from the specific questions of part one part two part three but your level of confidence the way you intonate your fluency your ability to enunciate your pronunciation your choice of words are affected by your body language okay some videos out there say, oh, body language is not important. What? Psychology has shown that 60% of communication is nonverbal. Okay, we communicate with our face and our hands a lot. Of course it has an effect on your score. Your body language and your verbal language are tied in the same places in your brain. Okay, so if you're not moving your hands or your lips and you're talking like this, you're not going to make a lot of sense. It's going to be a little bit flat and incoherent, okay? So of course it helps to move your hands and your body. And of course, if you start your IELTS speaking interview by saying, yeah, sure, here, okay, here. My name, Adrian, yes, okay, yes. I wake up, seven, yes, okay? Of course there's gonna affect your score. Of course it's gonna affect your score, all right? Think about it, guys and girls. All right, you're there to communicate every word that you say. If you show up in your work pants that you use to clean your house, okay, and you're dirty, of course it's going to affect your score and your confidence in the way the examiner is looking at you. We're all human, all right? So you have to consider those indirect effects. Is the examiner going to give you bonus marks for showing up one hour before your exam? Of course not. But is that going to affect your score? Of course it will, because your brain is working in English for an hour before your exam, all right? It's not rocket science, guys, come on, all right, okay? 
the answers have to be so Mandy says but the answers have to be to the point yes but they have to be expressive okay so there's a balance between being to the point and being expressive right this person is a stranger they don't know you they don't know the way that you think don't over speak but don't under speak you have to find that balance and I'm going to show you how to do that okay all right so the right balance for this kind of question when you meet a stranger may I see your identification is yes sure here's my passport that I've used for registration please have a look okay instead of yes sure okay if I'm traveling and I'm going through the airport and I'm at customs and the customs officer asks me can I see your passport I don't just go yeah sure and stick it in front of them I go yes of course just give me a second I have to get it from my luggage or I have to get it from my pocket so I, I use a full sentence to express myself right okay <clears throat> So be expressive, okay? Um, and then the examiner will ask you, what is your full name? Again, be expressive, okay? Don't just go John Smith. Okay, John, right? So be expressive. Like Anurag in the chat. All right, Anurag uh, says, <clears throat> my given name is Anurag and my family name is Shock. Please call me Anurag. Perfect. It's not over talking. It's expressive. Okay. So you don't have to be like, my given name is Anurag and my family name is Shock, as you will see in my passport. But all of my friends like to call me Anurag. So you can do the same. Thank you. Okay. We don't have to do that. Okay. So, you know, we, we can, we know that that's a bit much, right? But saying, you know, Anurag Shock. Okay. Um, what should I call you? Uh, Unrug. Okay, Unrug. Right? That would be, that's awkward. Right? So Unrug here has the perfect kind of balance of answers. It says, my given name is Unrug. My family name is Shuck. Please call me Unrug. Okay? Ganesh, if you have a middle name, you can give your middle name as well. Right? Okay. Um, if you have a middle name, you would say my given names are. Okay. So Ganesh says, what if I have a middle name? Um, if you have a middle name, you can do this. Okay. You can say my given uh, names are um, Thomas uh, Frederick and my surname is Mackenzie. Uh, but I just go by Fred. Please call me Fred. Okay, so you can do that if you have a middle name. All right. My given names are Thomas Frederick. And my surname is Mackenzie, but I just go by Fred. Please call me Fred. Okay, Fred. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a uh, general topic. Chayani, we don't say my long name, okay? It's just my full name, my whole name, my given name. Uh, don't say my long name, okay? That's strange, all right? Okay, um, so uh, next question, very common one. The examiner will say, do you work or study? Icon says, currently I'm in my penultimate year and I'm studying petroleum engineering at university. Um, yeah, it's okay. Uh, penultimate year is kind of unnatural. You wouldn't really hear a native speaker using that so much. Um, <clears throat> so you want to say something like, currently I'm in my uh, final year and I am studying petroleum engineering at university um, and then you might say something a little bit more uh, icon like um, and after I graduate uh, I plan to do my masters in the US okay something like that so a little bit more all right you want to speak express yourself all right Uba Dulaev says, 
Okay, so be expressive, students. Be expressive. Uba Dulayev says, um, I both work and study. I study at the University of ABCO and I work as a teacher uh, in an international school. Okay, um, Uba, Yida, Uba, Uba, sorry, Uba Dulayev. Um, I both work and study is a good start. I like the use of the correlative conjunction, both and, okay? That emphasizes that you do this and this. So I both work and study. Instead of repeating I study, I would say I'm a student. So we want to avoid repetition within sentences. I'm a student at uh, the University of, we don't usually say named, it's not natural, of ABCO. Um, and I work uh, as a teacher in an international uh, school teaching um, students geography okay so finish that idea if I'm your examiner and you're sitting there and you're telling me that you're a student at the University of ABCO and that you teach at an international school I have two questions in my head right away Ubay Dulaev. One question, what do you study? The other question, what do you teach? Okay, you've told me that you study and that you teach, but you haven't told me what you study or what you teach. And that's kind of weird. Okay, I would like to know that, all right, as your examiner. Because in a natural conversation with a stranger, those would be natural questions. Okay, so one way to think about, you know, like students will often ask me, like, well, how much do I answer? Like, what do I say? How much, where do I stop? Okay, that's those are very, very common questions. Is everybody, do you have that those questions, students? Like, do you have this question in your head? Like, how, um, how do I know uh, what to say and when to stop speaking? Are these questions in your head when you're doing the IELTS? Okay, uh, Muhammad kind of says yes. Okay, well, one way to think about this, all right, so uh, Zara Nigor says yes, Narusuke says yes, good, right, that makes sense, right? How do I know what to say and when to stop speaking? So think about it this way, right? It's use your best logic, okay? So um, think about uh, the examiner and what you would like to know if the tables uh, were turned and you were talking to a stranger uh, candidate, okay? So think about it that way, right? So if, if you're the examiner and you're speaking to Ubay Dulayev and Ubay Dulayev says, I both work and study, I'm a student at the University of ABCO and I work as a teacher in the international school. Many of us, if not all of us, would naturally have this curiosity of like, okay, so what do you study and what do you teach, right? Would you, do you agree with me? Is that, would that be naturally just, you know, some questions that would come to your mind right away if you heard a candidate say that, look, I study at the University of Victoria and I'm also teaching at an international school in Lingua, right? Wouldn't you naturally be like, okay, so what do you teach? What do you study, right? Okay, of course you would, um, or many of you would, for sure. Because if the student just goes to the next question, you're kind of like, so are we getting to know each other or are we just really talking in the air beside each other, right? Okay, so that's what you have to think about, all right? So what would you think? And what would be the over-speaking, right? Um, if, the, if the person starts talking about the car that they bought last week, you'd be like, well, I don't really want to know about that. We're talking about your work and your, your study, 
right? Okay, so think about the examiner and what you would like to know, all right? Another way, of course, that you should always think, as I keep saying, is you want to give an answer, an explanation, and an example, okay? The explanation is especially important. The example is a good idea, but you don't always need it. The why uh, question is very important. It's the most important question. Humans love to know reasons. The reasons for it. We're a curious bunch. We're curious uh, to um, we're curious to know uh, the reasons for ideas. Okay, so make sure to give explanations basically for every single question. Okay, every single question. All right, students. So here we go. Uh, next question. Give me a nice full sentence answer and then we'll analyze it. Okay. Um, what do you like to do when you are not working or studying? Okay. So depending on what you just answered, uh, the examiner will often follow up questions, even in part one. They want you to realize that they are in a conversation with you. It's not just random questions being listed for you. Okay. So what do you like to do when you're not working or studying? All right. All right. So let's take a look at Alexi's uh, answer here. Okay. So Alexi is one of our members and Alexi says, I do really enjoy to stroll along pavement. It helps me unwind. However, I don't have enough time to do it on a daily basis as I want. Okay, um, so this would be about a band five level answer, Alexi. Okay, why? So let's analyze each other's responses a little bit. And that's a good way to understand what you should say, what you shouldn't say, how you should say it. Uh, let's take a look at Alexi's response here. Okay, we learn from each other. Peer learning is fantastic, okay? So, I do really enjoy to stroll along pavement. It helps me unwind. However, I don't have enough time to do it on a daily basis as I want. Um, why is this a band five? Okay. What do you think? So why would the examiner, even if you say this fluently, um, just like I did right now, you would get a band five for it. So why do you think that is? Raquea says it's off topic. So some of it goes off topic. Um, what is off topic here? I agree with you. So this part here is off topic. Okay. However, I don't have enough time to do it on a daily basis as I want. Maybe it's just me. Don't take this the wrong way, Alexi, but I don't care. I wasn't asking you about that. Okay. So in the examiner's head, I don't really care that you don't have time uh, for it. I wasn't asking you about that. Okay. So that's what's going on in the examiner's head. I do really enjoy to stroll along pavement. This is strange. Okay. That's that's strange English. I mean, are you telling me like you like to walk around in the city? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I think, maybe. So um, I like um, to, or I enjoy taking a 30-minute um, stroll around the city when I'm not um, uh, hitting the books. Uh, as this helps me unwind. 
okay uh, somebody says the helps me unwind was incorrect but that actually is correct the helps me unwind that's the correct part of this sentence so it helps me unwind perfect English natural no mistakes there okay so um, I think what you're trying to tell me is that you like to walk around your neighborhood and uh, on the city streets um, walking along on the pavement it's a bit weird to say okay so I do really enjoy to uh, take a 30 minute stroll around the city when I'm not hitting the books or when I'm not studying okay um, as this helps me unwind and then instead of saying however I don't have enough time to do it that's going kind of into an unnecessary area there we could say like um, I went uh, for uh, a walk just yesterday after uh, studying IELTS uh, for eight hours okay so this would be your band nine uh, response all right now students make sure to only put your comments in the chat once please don't flood the chat okay um, it helps me to teach you better and um, pay attention to this band nine versus band five example here right so this is the original listen um, so what do you like to do when you are not working or studying I do really enjoy to stroll along pavement it helps me unwind however I don't have enough time to do it on a daily basis as I want okay here's a band nine response what do you like to do when you are not working or studying I do really enjoy to oh sorry I enjoy taking a 30 minute uh, stroll around the city when I'm not hitting the books as this helps me unwind I went for a walk just yesterday after studying IELTS for eight hours okay so that would be your upgraded version of a response to what the examiner does want to hear okay so this is what you like doing okay that's what you did the last time all right fine now the examiner will say let's talk about music you're very welcome Alexi all right so um, let's talk about music what is your favorite kind of music give me a nice full sentence answer for this remember part one is all about you students this is speaking so be sure to speak and repeat so copy what I say copy how I say it the corrections as well okay all right students use English in the chat and put your answers only once please all right so only once All right, Ezio, here we go, says, my favorite kind of music is pop. Actually, I like all kinds of music, but the most favorite part is pop. That is because most people listen to music. Pop music is the most uh, common music around us. Band five. Okay. Why does ASIO get a band five for this answer? If you say it fluently, if you don't say it fluently, you get a band four, if you have to think about it. Okay, and there's a few different mistakes with this as well. Okay, so here is um, ASIO's answer. My favorite kind of music is pop. Actually, I like all kinds of music, but the most favorite part is pop. That is because most people listen to music pop music is the most common music around us Harjot says it's off topic pop 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 um, you're right a little bit Harjot it is kind of off topic but it's not because of pop 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 uh, Vu Dunk says it's repetition yes ex exactly so the examiner here will uh, say Yep, there's too much repetition. So this is what the examiner is thinking. Awkward repetition of the same idea. Yes, that would be one negative. Okay, what else? What else is it? 
So tell me every part that the examiner would find wrong with this answer, why they would not give it a good bad score, okay? So why would, why would the examiner say that, okay, this is a band five answer at best, even if you're really fluent, you're using nice pronunciation, you're getting a band five, okay? Harjot says there's no explanation. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a very confusing explanation at best, okay? All right. Um, yeah, Vu says it's poor cohesion. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's very disjointed. Um, students, who is this question asking about? What is your favorite kind of music? Who is this question asking about? Okay, who is this question asking about? Is it asking about people? Is it asking about the world? Is it asking about aliens? Yeah, Kiol says all people don't matter here. It's asking about you, exactly. So Ezio starts by saying my favorite kind of music is pop. And then Ezio gets really confusing, okay, so The answer gets very confusing. Actually, I like all kinds of music. Okay, so wait a second. Your favorite is pop or actually you like all kinds of music? All right, I don't get it now. So I'm confused. As soon as the examiner is confused, your band score is dropping like a meteor falling out of the sky, okay? Keep that in mind, students. So as soon as the IELTS examiner feels confused, by your answer, your speaking score drops like a meteor falling from the sky. Okay, all right, you cannot confuse the examiner, so you can't say my favorite kind of music is pop and then say actually I like all kinds of music. If you tell me that and we're speaking in our own native language, I'm still gonna be like okay, so is pop your favorite music, right? So just stick to one answer here, okay? And then there's a really awkward like loop back, but my most favorite is pop. It's like, so your favorite is pop. So your favorite is not pop. So your favorite is pop. What? This is where if your examiner is a robot, they start to spark, spark, explode, okay? Um, so, uh, but they're not robots, not yet, anyway. Um, and then suddenly here, that is because most people listen to music. Hmm? What? How is that related to you liking pop? And then pop music is the most common music around us. Really? I didn't know that. Did Wikipedia tell us this information? Um, so there's just a lot of confusion here. Okay, when there's a lot of confusion, you're not getting a good band score, all right? So you have to really clear this up as you know, to, um, to make it a band nine level answer. So your correct answer here would be something like, um, I enjoy listening to uh, pop music uh, the most uh, because I like the rhythm and energy of this genre. Um, my uh, favorite pop artist is Rihanna, for instance, okay, however we spell her name there, all right? Not a super long answer, but clear, right? So I enjoy listening to pop music the most because I like the rhythm and energy of this genre. My favorite pop artist is Rihanna. Okay, good, I can give you a band nine. I know what your favorite is, why you like it, and you just gave me an example of it. Sure, band nine, okay? Does that make sense, right? Okay, does that make sense? The difference there, right? 
So content, uh, I can't remember who it was, but somebody at the beginning of the class asked me like, what is, according to my experience, what's the most common difficulty for people in the speaking section? And my answer was the content, the content, what people actually say. So it's not the pronunciation, it's not the grammar, it's not the lexical resource, it's the content, it's the coherence. Students tend to speak to the examiners like they're talking to their buddy, like they're talking to um, one of their siblings that they've known for a long time. And this is a professional conversation, okay? You really have to pay attention to clear, accurate answers, right? Part one is about you. Don't talk about people. Don't talk about the world, okay? Um, here we go. Next question. Try this one, students. We'll do one or two more and then we'll actually get into some real practice here, okay? So what do you use to listen to music? Give me a nice um, full sentence answer to this question. So what do you use to listen to music? Now I see some better answers, by the way, coming up in the chat. Uh, Ishma says, I'm fond of classical music because it's calm and smoothing. When I listen to such type of music, I can relate the lyrics to my life, life, think about loved ones, and I enjoy that. Ishma, that's a great answer. All right. Ubaidulayev, that's a much better answer to this question. Ubaidulayev, if you look at the chat, says, in order to listen to music, I always use my headphones because it is the most convenient device for me in terms of listening uh, to my favorite songs. Um, my headphones are linked to my smartphone and my smartphone has a music player app and gigabytes of my favorite songs, okay? So what do you use to listen to music? Kiel says, music is all around me. Kiel, how is that connected to what do you use to listen to music? Uh, start with I use my phone and YouTube to listen to music because YouTube has any song I can think of at any time. The other day, I really wanted to listen to um, a Michael Jackson song, so I looked it up on YouTube and immediately it was there. Okay, so kill more accurate answers, all right? Okay, Ma'an says, I use many things like mobile phones and laptops, but I enjoy it the most on the television. Ma'an, you don't use many things because you don't use your broom and you don't use um, your microwave. So I use a lot of different electronics, devices, hardware, and software. Don't use the word things, students. It's awkward and useless, okay? All right, so what do you use to listen to music? Um, most of the time, I stream uh, music from the internet uh, using my smartphones. And uh, my smartphone um, and my uh, Bluetooth uh, speakers. This is because I am listening to music uh, on the go uh, when I commute to school. Okay, there you go. There's a nice band nine answer for you. So again, repeat after me, okay? And when you hear new words, remember them, write them down. So uh, what do you use to listen to music? Most of the time, I stream music from the internet using my smartphone and my Bluetooth speakers. This is because I'm listening to music on the go when I commute to school. Super. Let's go to the next question, okay? All right, uh, students, I want you to practice this with me so I can give you a better, clear concept of the speaking section. So again, we're going to go to our website here and on the website, you can volunteer to speak. So we're going to actually do some IELTS speaking interview on this topic to um, volunteer for uh, speaking. You can register a free or a paid account at aehelp.com or at gieltshelp.com if you're a general IELTS student, okay? 
so you go to um, aehelp.com, that's this one here with the blue background. General IELTS is the green background. Again, you can create a premium account with this big uh, red button that's just above my head there, okay? And then uh, once you have a My Student account, um, you can click on this, and you can use this for free, by the way, also students. Um, so um, there's a computer-based practice exams in here and audio CDs and lots, lots more, but we're using the student partner speaking right there. It's also just above my head. To talk with each other, you click on that. Um, you accept the terms that you're going to speak politely, practice IELTS, and then you will be in here with all of your fellow students and peers. Uh, you see many of our premium students in here, Marcian, Raquea, Andrew, Eugene, Piotr. So that's fantastic. You see a lot of our uh, members and so forth. You'll see me in here. You'll see me as a master, okay? Uh, you will see a blue envelope next to my name as well, like here with Kamal. And you can click on that blue envelope and then send me a message, say, I want to volunteer. And then we'll get into some IELT speaking practice, okay? So uh, let me just um, reach out to someone here and start the day off with some volunteering. Um, all right, uh, Virgo, I think we spoke to last week. So let's see if Virgo is there. We can try again. Virgo, are you ready? Oh, are you ready, Virgo? Virgo says yes. All right. Hi, hi, Virgo. Virgo. Hello? Hi, Virgo. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Good, good. Uh, Virgo, can you remind me where you are? I know. I think this is your second time calling, correct? Yes. Perfect. You're back for a bit more. That's awesome. And where are you right now, Virgo? I come from... I come from... Actually, I come from the North. And I come from the North by the in Hello. Okay, so from Vietnam, that is fantastic. Uh, Virgo, are you ready to practice a few speaking part one questions? Yes. All right, let's get into it. So welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? Yes, I, uh, I am studying in secondary school. What do you like to do I'm when you are not working or studying? Uh, when I um, when I don't want to study, I usually uh, I usually watch films in order to uh, in order to release stress and anxiety and I and sometimes I have a great conversation with my friends. Uh, last week, I had a I had a great conversation with a uh, friends of mine. He's, he's he was very. Let's talk about uh, music. What is your favorite kind of music? Um. Uh, actually, it's my drawers. My favorite genres of music, my favorite music genres, in modern, in modern music, because it uh because uh in this day and age, uh many uh pop, many traditional uh, music by pop music or classical music are outdated and. My first guy, and I, it, it, when I have free time, I usually listen to uh, many songs 
a song by Centum NTV and Taylor Swift. Okay, let's and stop S there. All right. Um, so, uh, Virgo, uh, not bad. Good. You're starting to get going, and I'm really happy you came back and volunteered a second time because that's what you need to do. You need to practice a lot of your speaking. So I can tell that you have a lot of vocabulary. You're practicing your grammar, and you need to use it in your speaking. So your band score for that, Virgo, would be about a band um, five, 4.5 to 5. The reason is because... I'm having difficulty clearly understanding what you're saying. And I know we don't have a perfect connection, so we have a little bit of static mm -hmm. and we have a little bit of interference. I think if we were face-to-face -face in, in the same room, I would understand you a little bit better. But your answers are still confusing for me. And one of the reasons why your answers are confusing for me, Virgo, is because you restart yourself. So, uh, for example... Uh, when I said, um, do you work or do you study, I understood the first part a bit, but then the, the next part was a bit unclear. So you want to really concentrate on having clarity from start to finish. When I asked you, what do you like to do when you're not working or studying? You said, when I am, and then you said, when I don't want to. So you restart yourself, okay? Don't, try not to restart yourself. So try to carry the first thought all the way from start to finish okay so if you start with when i am just keep going with that so when i am not studying for university i like to hang out with my friends or watch a movie uh, just to relax and recharge my batteries uh, last saturday i was tired of um, reading my textbooks so I went uh, to a cafe with my friend Mary for a couple hours, okay? So I just keep going with the same idea. I don't, I don't jump back and correct myself every time, okay? I really want you to practice that, where you just start with one idea and you finish with that idea, okay, Virgo? Yes. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right, um, so practice that and come back again and keep volunteering, okay? I want, I want to hear that next time that we're, when we're chatting where you just continue with the same thought, okay? Yes. All right. Thank you for being my first volunteer this week, Virgo. Have an awesome rest of your day in Vietnam. Yes. Okay, bye for now. All right, that was Virgo. I could tell she was a little bit nervous, but it was it's okay. That's how we start. Uh, Piotr, let's try Piotr. We don't talk much, I think, Piotr. Um, and Piotr is a premium student. All right, Piotr, let's check this out. Are you ready? Okay, hang in there, students. We've got a bit of time. Piotr, if you're there, let me know. You are. Good. Hello. Hi, Piotr. How are you? I'm fine, but a little bit nervous. What about you? I am doing all right. Thank you for asking. Um, Piotr, have we had a chance to talk in the past? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we had a chance, I think, one month ago. I was uh, volunteering while reading section. Okay, but not for the speaking. Good. I thought I thought I've recognized your voice. Can you just tell everybody where you are and why you're taking the IELTS? Uh, I am right now in Russia, the capital Moscow city, and I'm taking the IELTS to continue my studies abroad in Europe. Okay. All right. And what will you be studying? I will be studying chemistry. Chemistry. Okay. All right. Very interesting science. It's a tough one. I, I found it difficult, but I always yeah. found it very interesting. Okay, Peter, then let's get into it. Are you ready for some questions? Yes. Okay, let's talk about music. What is your favorite kind of music? Uh, my favorite genre of music is uh, indie pop, I think, because of uh, chill vibes that it uh, provides to me and because of uh, simple drum and piano sounds. What do you use to listen to music? Uh, usually I use my uh, smartphone and laptop and to improve my experience I use uh, headphones 
But apart from these uh, physical objects, I use uh, streaming service uh, Spotify, which has a huge library of music. How often do you listen to music? Uh, I listen to music every day. I think uh, maybe five times a day because uh, I listen to it while I'm uh, on my way at university and while I'm cooking. So I think that very, uh, I listen to it very much. All right, good. Piotr, I'm going to stop there and just give you some feedback. Um, so fairly good. Okay, coherent, clear, uh, a good balance of information, um, start, start to stop. You would definitely get a band 7.5 to 8 for that so far. So um, according to the IELTS, band 7 is good English, band 8 is very good English. But it's not just good English or very good English, it's also good communication to very good communication. So that's kind of the hidden part that a lot of uh, the uh, candidates aren't clearly aware of that it's not just English but it's communication especially at the seven eight nine level they're not just looking for English they're looking for communication and here your communication was um, good to very good not necessarily very good to expert right so that's what you want to reach um, let me give you a little bit of feedback and here are the differences like when you get up into the band seven five eight eight five nine category of IELTS so those perfect scores the differences are very slight so the examiners are very critical about small not even necessarily mistakes but um, choosing the best possible words or grammar uh, within context um, so when I asked you this first question, uh, what's your favorite kind of music? And you said, I, um, uh, you said, uh, my favorite genre, let me just find it here. My favorite genre of music is indie pop because, um, I think it has, uh, it has chill vibes that it provides me. The chill vibes was good. The provides me was a bit awkward or it okay. provides, um, just simply so in natural English you would just simply say I think uh, it's because of the chill vibes when you say it's because of the chill vibes it's intrinsic that you feel those chill vibes when you listen to any pop so that was just a just a very slight awkward way to finish that concept which lowers it to that band seven five eight right but it's just a small difference the other small difference if I look at this question here what do you listen uh, what do you use to listen to music? You said, usually I use my smartphone and laptop. And to improve my experience, I use headphones. That was really good. So until there, you have a band nine. Um, I really liked that connection of to improve my experience. I thought that was very nice, natural, expressive English. That was great. Okay. Um, and then you said, but apart from these physical devices objects. objects yes you said objects right even see even my mind naturally was trying to reach for a better word and it was physical objects even physical devices would have been better because we often refer to these electronic gadgets as devices but you said objects and objects is a bit awkward like you wouldn't really hear a native speaker choosing that combination of words physical objects for this they would say physical devices or devices or gadgets or band nine most technically um, I would probably say apart uh, from um, this hardware or these mm -hmm. hardware okay um, I use Spotify, um, which is software, of course, right? So you have hardware, you have software. So right. I use uh, Spotify, which is a uh, live streaming software uh, for um, choosing any music that's out there in the world today, right? So it's just those subtle differences that you need to pay attention to, Piotr, when you're speaking, okay? Yeah.
All right. Now that comes from practice. So you want lots of practice, lots of feedback and lots of self-assessment. So I think when, you know, when we were analyzing the physical objects, you started to realize like, yeah, that's kind of a weird way to say that. Right. And you realize that there's some yes. other words there. So that's what you want to do. You want to analyze and always correct yourself. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. You're very welcome, Piotr. Keep up the good work and I hope you become an awesome chemist. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. You too. Bye for now. All right, so that was Piotr. That was quite good. I mean, of course, once you're up in that 7-5 range, you're doing well, right? Um, so you want to focus on just that lexical resource. Another way, by the way, Piotr and everyone to find those more natural words and expressions is by doing a lot of reading. So do a lot of, you know, reading of magazine articles, um, newspaper articles online, of course, mostly these days, English articles where you come in contact with these natural collocations or uh, word choices in the situation. Okay, let's take another uh, premium student here, Eugene. Eugene, are you ready? And don't worry, students, if you're lower in the list, I do jump around, so I don't just stay at the top of the list here. I will move around a little bit. Eugene, if you're still with me, give me a sign and I will reach out to you. Eugene is there. Awesome. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Eugene. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for asking. Um, Eugene, have we talked before? Um, not really. I think last week we tried to connect, but my network wasn't was very bad, so I couldn't talk to you. Okay, but now here you are. That's fantastic, Eugene. You didn't give up. That's the key to success. Eugene, can you tell everybody where you are in the world and what, why you are uh, learning for the IELTS? Okay. Um, currently, I live in Ghana, and it's also my um, motherland. Um, and it is located in the West Africa. Um, and then I'm practicing for IELTS in order to um, take a next step in my career. So I want to work in the overseas and I need a required bar score of seven. Okay, and what uh, profession, if I may ask? Okay, um, I work as a professional nurse. I'm okay. currently working in a pediatric um, specialist hospital. Oh, wow, okay, so you're working with children? Yes, please. Okay, so a nurse helping children, pediatric nurse, that's great, I'm, hats off to you. I'm. I'm Happy to help you. That's a beautiful job. Okay, uh, let me ask you a couple of uh, questions. Are you ready? Yes, please. Okay, so let's talk about music. How often do you listen to music? Um, well, I don't normally listen to music, um, but as and when I become free, I try to listen to some um, hymns and spiritual songs. Um, because of the nature of my job, I don't normally get too much free time. Where do you usually listen to music? Come again? Where do you usually listen to music? Um, well, I normally listen to some um, lovely um, hymns um, when I'm, whenever I'm on break at work site. I normally enjoy myself. Uh, in the staff lounge. Has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Yes, in my point of view, I think um, uh, music, my music choice has changed drama um, drastically because of, um, I used to listen to pop music, but as I'm advancing in age, I now love um, listening to um, hymns and other religious musics. Okay, let me stop there and give you some feedback.
Okay. So that would be about a band seven um, level speaking, which is good because that's what you need to get, right? Is at least a band seven. And I think you can get at least a band seven. You should also maybe even be able to get a higher score, like a seven, five, eight even. And when you need a band seven, um, Eugene, uh, as in your case, you always want to aim higher. So you never want your goal to be your minimum requirement. So you want to you want to aim for band 7.5 or 8. And I think you can do that, Eugene, in the speaking section for sure. You have to adjust your speaking a little bit, not much, a little bit. It's kind of the same situation as with Piotr where you're... Um, not finding the perfect words for the situation like um, you said but as I'm advancing in age it's okay it's it's acceptable English but it's definitely not the best choice of English especially not at the very good or expert level um, what would be the correct word here Eugene it starts with an M maybe somebody in the chat can help us out here instead of advancing in age which is okay um, there's a couple of more natural ways to say this what would be a more natural way to say that, Eugene, advancing in age? Oh, okay. Um, what about using um, whilst I'm aging? Yeah, as I'm, I'm yeah, as I'm aging or as I'm growing older, okay, would be good. Um, now, Andrew in the chat and Bogdan in the chat and Ali Asgar are using the expert word. Uh, for you there. Do you see the word in the chat that they're giving you? Yes, growing older. Mm -hmm. Nope, the other one that starts with an M. M okay, maturing. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, but as I'm maturing, we mature through our entire lifetime, so even into elderly age, right? So, as I'm maturing, um, okay. or or as I have matured over the years now I listen more okay. to okay so um, okay. maturing is definitely the expert level word and the examiner catches this like in their head as soon as you use that you know in their head like oh okay so you mean while you're maturing and as soon as in their head there's a word replacement that comes up your lexical resource mark kind of suffers from that that makes sense right so okay. so it's yeah. those tiny points now the other really important point here okay and this is a very important one for you all right okay. when i when i asked you how often do you listen to music you shut down the question you said well i don't normally listen to music try to avoid that in the aisle so try not to shut down the question okay, okay. instead of saying okay. i normally don't listen to music just say i rarely listen to music so you can say um, well, I rarely have time to listen to music. So, well, I rarely uh, listen to music. Um, but okay. when I have free time, I listen to hymns and spiritual songs. Now, whenever you get a question that deals with frequency, like how often, you should always think about numbers. Like how often would you say, Eugene? Once a week? Twice a day? So how often do you listen to music? Um, normally, um twice a day twice a day okay and it doesn't have to be realistic so on the aisles you don't have to like figure it out you can just say uh, once a day right so whatever comes quickly to your head um, well I rarely listen to music as I am very busy with work uh, I would say uh, at most uh, once or twice a day for uh, 20 minutes Okay. okay, so okay. that would be a much more accurate answer. Can you try that? And again, this is for everybody. So please try to repeat this, everyone, not just for Eugene. Eugene, I'm going to say this sentence and then copy after me, okay? So, okay. um, well, I rarely listen to music because I'm very busy with work. I would say at most once or twice a day for 20 minutes. Okay. Um, well, I rarely listen to music as I'm very busy with work. And I would say at most once or twice a day and um, 20 minutes. For about 20 minutes. For about 20 minutes. Okay, good. Now, I asked you, where do you usually listen to music? And you gave me an okay answer there as well, but it was a bit awkward. And you said that you listen to hymns and spiritual music. Um, Eugene, uh, do you attend um, sermons? So do you go to church on Sundays or on, on another day? On Sundays. 
Okay. And do you listen to hymns during your Sunday sermon? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, don't you don't need to say please at the end of the yes. Okay. So cut that part out out of the out of the language. That's awkward. All right. All okay? right. So just okay. yes, just yes. Um, all right. So I I was expecting that. Okay. So while I was talking to you, as soon as you said hymns and spiritual music, I had this feeling that you attend church, and I was expecting that you would say that on Sundays um, is at churches where you listen to music. So when I asked you, where do you usually listen to music? I thought for sure you might say church, but you didn't. And that was kind of like, okay, so really just during breaks at work, it was like, so you start to c create this kind of maybe confusion in my head as the examiner. So here, uh, the best answer probably would have been every week I uh, listen to music um, at my local church during Sunday sermon. Aside from that, I listen to some hymns during my break time at work. Okay, so try that. Um, where do you usually listen to music? Um, well, I listen to more music at church, at my local church. And then also whenever I get some free time at work, I listen to some few um, hymns as well. Perfect. Much better. That's a band eight at least. Okay. It's the clarity. So the coherence, right? So I know, it, you know, at first time volunteering, everybody's kind of nervous. It's hard to have the brain and the language all working at the same time. Yes. So I, I get it. Yes. But that's what you want yes. to practice. And, and that's another big reason to show up to the exam center an hour before your interview. So you can just get over that nervousness and really get into some good quality answers. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Eugene, thank you so much for volunteering and uh, keep up the practice. I, I look forward to having you back uh, here with me uh, in the coming classes, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. You're very welcome. Bye, Eugene. Bye. All right. That was Eugene. Let's give him a thumbs up. That was his first time volunteering and he was very brave. And what a beautiful profession Eugene has, a pediatric nurse helping children. So, um, we need people like you, Eugene, in the world. Thank you for volunteering with us. All right, um, let's take uh, somebody else, somebody from lower down on the list. I said, you know, we take people from lower down on the rest list. So let's take one more of our uh, premium students here. Let's take Ryan. I don't think we've talked to Ryan. I don't think we have. So let's give Ryan a chance here. Ryan, are you ready? If you're there with us, let me know, Ryan. So I do move around in the list, everybody. This is for everybody to use, by the way, this chat interface, so you can talk to each other. That's why it's student partner speaking. Um, so you do it just like what we're doing right now. You send somebody else a message. Hey, would you like to practice some out speaking with me? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Let's ask some questions. Keep this chat open whenever you're using the website. Okay. Ryan, if you are there, Give me a sign. Safad says, I face some problems speaking English. Safad, this is the right place. This is where you can fix that. You can practice with other uh, students. All right. It looks like Ryan might have gone to bed or out for a coffee or a tea. So we'll look for somebody else. Uh, Chansu. Let's see if Chansu is there. Uh, Chansu, are you ready? Let's see if Chansu is there. Yes, okay. Itachi, the site link is ahelp.com. I'll put it into the chat, okay? Hi. Hi, Chansu, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, what about you? I am doing okay. Thank you for asking. Is this the same Chansu who sent me an email a couple days ago about the situation in Turkey? Yes, 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 it's me. Yes, it's me. Oh, wow. Okay. It's good to actually hear your voice and talk to you. I'm glad we were able to help you <laughs> and your friend a little bit about that uh, Chansu. So Chansu is from Turkey. And of course, as everybody knows in the world news today, Turkey is going through some challenging times with uh, the natural disaster that happened there. So Chansu, we're all... Um, 
you know, yeah. uh, with you in spirit, hoping that everybody gets through that as, as best as possible. Um, in yeah. fact, one of one of our key uh, company members is in Turkey as well in Istanbul, and he was telling me that even the internet is a bit tricky in Turkey uh, sometimes right now because of what happened. So, um, so I'm glad we're able to connect, Chansu. Yeah, thank you. Actually, we are in the safe right now, uh, so we are connected. It's very good. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you nice and clearly, which is great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Chansu, why are you taking the IELTS exam? Uh, actually, I graduated from master degree, so I want to apply for PhD degree in Europe. Uh, so I need to IELTS score. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. <laughs> Okay, and what will your PhD, uh, PhD be focusing in? Actually, uh, my area is molecular biology. Molecular biology. Now, yeah. as you probably know, when you apply, especially for a PhD or a doctorate degree, as we can say, um, then you want to get as high of a score as possible. So they usually say like band 7 or 8. Uh, minimum but basically you're trying to get like a band 8.5 if you can okay yeah yeah actually 6.5 is enough for apply but yeah if I can get the higher it's, it could be better it must be better I'll tell you why yeah. Chansu because 6.5 is what they say technically in the application but when mm -hmm. you're doing a PhD you need a supervisor okay the supervisor who is going to guide you through your um, thesis and your your studies and um, the supervisors these days will often check to see what the IELTS score is and they will often choose students who have at least a 7.5 or higher because they want to have good communication with their PhD students right so you want to get at least a 7.5 keep that in mind okay yeah okay all right not because of your university requirement but because of your supervisor's requirement okay yeah mm -hmm. all right okay so let me ask you some questions about uh music give me some nice full sentence answers watch the grammar of the questions okay are you ready yeah i'm ready all right here we go um where do you usually listen to music uh actually I'm listening to music um, actually uh, I mm, I'm using public transportation every day so I listen to music on the bus or on the train uh, and I am using uh, Spotify or YouTube music application on my phone Has Sometimes your choice then, has your choice in music changed in the last 20 years? I'm not sure. I'm listening generally in the uh, popular music, but it could be the change. If you could learn to play an instrument, what would it be? I think uh, I can start the, uh, with the easy one. Maybe I can play the guitar because I'm familiar to play the guitar. Uh, in my uh, high school years, I get I got some guitar lesson from my tutor. Maybe yeah, it could be the guitar. Okay, that is the end of part one. That concludes um, that part of the speaking. We'll now go to part two. Okay, uh, let me give you some feedback. So, so far, based on these answers, you are at about a band six to maybe 6.5, depending on how we do in the rest of the speaking section. Um, the, you're losing marks in a few places, so you're losing a little bit in coherence, you're losing a little bit in lexical resource, um, you're losing a little bit in fluency, so you're kind of losing marks here and there in all of the criteria and grammar, 
grammatical range and accuracy as well. So for you, Chansu, you want to improve globally on all of those different criteria, okay? So you want to improve your lexical resource, you want to improve your grammatical range and accuracy, um, your fluency, so you want to improve all of these together, which is okay, and that can happen nice and fast. How much time do you have before your IELTS test, Chansu? Uh, maybe in three months. Okay, three months is a good amount of time. You can make a lot of improvement mm -hmm. in three months, okay? So with lots of practice and good practice, effective practice, you can get up to that 7-5 range, and that's what you should be targeting, okay? okay? Let me give you a little bit specific feedback. It sounds like you have a question. If you have a question, go ahead. Actually, I stop when I speaking because I am ready to uh, your previously questions, but you ask me the new questions. Yeah. So I do that I'm not on purpose. Ready to... Yeah, I yeah, do that yeah. on purpose. You can't preload yeah. your answers in the real IELTS exam. There's no preloading your answers. In fact, if yeah. the examiner feels like you're memorizing some English and you're trying to use that, they will switch the questions on you. Suddenly, they won't be talking about music. Suddenly, they will be talking about sports. And you'll be like, what? Mm -hmm. But you just told me we're talking about music. But if they feel like you tried to memorize some answers for music and you're using those, they will immediately switch to another topic because they really want you um, using original answers for the questions, okay? So you can't preload, and that's why I do it. That's why I always ask kind of surprise questions. Um, let me give you a bit more specific feedback. So I asked you, where do you usually listen to music? And you said, uh, actually, I'm listening to music. Uh, careful with your use of the be verb. So I am listening, okay? So if it's the am, then you need the ing. So actually, I am listening. And I think I gave this advice to Virgo. I'm giving you the same advice here. Don't restart your English, okay? Stay with the same English that you start with. So uh, actually, I'm listening to music while I'm using public transportation every day. So I'm listening to music on the bus or the train on my way uh, to work or school. Uh, for about um, 30 minutes uh, in the morning and in the afternoon. Try to repeat that after me, okay? I'll say it one more time. So just listen, Chansu, and then repeat after me. Actually, I'm listening to music while I'm using public transportation every day. So I'm listening to music on the bus or the train on the way to work or school for about 30 minutes in the morning and afternoon. Okay. Uh, actually, I am listening to music while I am using public transportation every day. So I am listening to music on the bus or train on the way to work or school for about 30 minutes in the morning and afternoon. Yeah, on the way to work or school. Yeah. Okay. Um, good, much better. So that would be your at least band 7.5 or 8, okay? I think you're there. I think you're very close. You just need to really, really practice, okay? Um, here, has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? I'm not sure. Do not start that way, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a... That's probably the worst way to start your IELTS answer. I'm not sure. Um, it's kind of like, yeah. what? <laughs> you want to be sure. On the IELTS, you're 100% sure all the time, okay? Uh, even if you're not sure, you're sure, all right? So there's no not okay. sure on the IELTS, okay. so you're always sure. Um, yes, it has, <laughs> okay? The <laughs> easiest way to reflect present perfect is with... Yes, it has, or no, it hasn't. Now, usually choosing the positive is the better choice. So has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Yes, it has. It has changed quite a bit over the last decade. Okay. Try that, just that first bit. Okay, yes, it has. It has changed quite a bit over the last decade. Has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years, Chun Su? Actually, uh, I think so, but... Uh, no, Jansu, I, I to... want you to just repeat me. I want you to just repeat me. So, yes, it has. It has changed quite a bit over the last decade. So, has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Okay, yes, it has. It has changed quite a bit over the last decade. 
Beautiful. Okay, I, that's exactly what I want you to do. No maybes, no nothings. It has changed quite a bit. And this is simply because I'm always listening to the most modern songs and music is always changing. Ten years ago, I listened to Jack Johnson. Uh, today, I listen to NSYNC. The examiner is not going to check who was when and where. Doesn't matter, okay? <laughs> All right? Okay. Try it in this way. So has your choice in music changed in the last ten years? <laughs> okay. Go with the answer that I just gave you, but you can change the names of the songs. So, has your choice in music changed in the last 10 years? Yes, it has. It has changed. Quite yes, a bit. it has. It has changed quite a bit <laughs> over the last decade. That's because I'm always listening to the most modern songs. That I'm listening generally to popular music, but it could be the change. But it, it's always changing. But it was always changing. Okay, so keep your thoughts simple, right? 10 years ago, electronic was really popular. Nowadays, it's drum and bass. Just whatever comes to mind, right? So, Chansu, simple thoughts, okay? And stick to the grammar. If the grammar is present perfect, has your choice changed? You have to show me present perfect. If the grammar is conditional, if you could learn to play a musical instrument, you need to use the condition. So given the chance to learn a musical instrument, I would master the guitar because I practiced it a bit when I was in high school and I really liked the sound of it, okay? So mm -hmm. use the grammar of the questions, all right, Chansu, and your answers, okay? Sounds good? Yeah, okay. Okay, right. thank you for the feedback. Okay, you're very, very welcome. So you're close. Keep practicing, keep coming back, okay? And I'll help you out some more, all right? Okay, okay, okay. I will, I will. Okay, bye, Chansu. We'll talk again later. Bye for now. Bye, goodbye. All right, so just fingers crossed for everybody in Turkey and Syria these days. I know it's, I, I live in an earthquake zone as well. Um, we're kind of always in the, under the danger of a big earthquake hitting Vancouver Island where I live and I can only imagine how scary it is when that actually happens. So I hope. I really do pray for the safety of everybody there. Um, all right, uh, students, again, this is um, academic uh, IELTS uh, help um, at aehelp.com. This is the website that we're using. We're using the student partner speaking. Thank you to my volunteers today. We'll have more speaking classes later in the week. Again, uh, join uh, the premium IELTS package by clicking this big red button. Okay, it's a one-time payment. It's lifetime access. It's worth it. And um, thank you, members. You're lovely. You're a great group of people. Domenico, Bogdan, Andrew, uh, Shayna. Thank you so much, Fuang. Um, I wish I could just talk to everybody. Maybe we'll do like a speaking marathon one day where I just keep going and keep talking to people. I'll figure that out, okay? I'll figure that out. Um, and... Um, and keep up the practice. When I'm not here, practice with each other, okay? Use the website. Uh, students, um, again, uh, lots more lessons this week. So tomorrow we've got, uh, I believe, reading for uh, members. And then we've got uh, listening um, uh, part three and part four. That's right, f continuing from... Uh, last week. So uh, check out uh, aehelp.com when you have a minute. Sign up for that premium package. It's worth it. Um, you see there are lots of premium members. Interact with each other. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out for now. But I'll be back tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to it. Have an awesome rest of your day. Much love to all of you, wherever you are. Bye.